Back to work, let's return with former assistant police chief and law enforcement veteran, now CEO of Metropolitan Protective Services in Maryland, Derek Parks. And we're also joined by former Atlanta police officer, attorney, and author of Observations of White Noise, an acid test for the First Amendment, Mark Harold. Mark, I want to thank you for joining the conversation here. Thank you. Mark, just before we came in here, I spoke to Derek, and Derek made a very good point. He said this is systemic right up to the top when we talk about what happened at Ferguson. This is not just the cops. This is not just maybe a police chief. This goes to the city council, the mayor, everybody right up the line. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. These things are almost always systemic when they get to this, uh, when they get this out of control, if what we're seeing in this report is correct. But, yeah, I think I would agree it's systemic. It almost always goes all the way to the top unless there's just a few bad actors and that's not the case here but then let me ask you same thing i asked derek here this is a, a damning report but there are people right now that are going to read this they're going to hear us talking about it and they're going to say this has to be the way things are run at every police department across the country if they get away with it there they must be getting away with it every place so you know there's going to be a broad brush that will smear every police department here in seconds correct Oh, I think people can interpret it that way. I don't know that that's true. What we're seeing in this report, and again, it's just a report. It hasn't been proven in a court of law. It's, it hasn't been under close scrutiny. It's a one-sided report. But from what we're seeing, you know, I do think that certain police departments do rise above this. But one of the things we're seeing, and we're seeing it across the country, is when you get an income-based incentive for law enforcement, when law enforcement, traffic enforcement, drug enforcement, especially low-level misdemeanors, are seen as revenue streams, uh, traffic cameras as we see in DC where I am and, and across the board when you start to get a revenue stream an expected source of income and you've got to bring that money in to make your budget then you see policing based for income and it's not the way it's supposed to be I think that's a big part of what we're seeing with the intrusion of the police departments and the courts all in this together to generate revenue all right now Derek I'm gonna to come to you on this because I think it's a very good point I, I see you wanted to say something about this but my question to you would be then how do you shut this down how do you take out the revenue base when people still have to get weapons bullets guns cars whatever else you need in order to make this work it's got to come from somewhere if not from the taxpayer well I'm not quite sure what the, the proper answer is is to that particular question but you know, my counterpart hit hit the nail right on the head. All of these red light tickets, everything is generated, generating revenues for the coffers. So there's no true benefit for city officials to change the way they do business. And what we have to look at is how do we take the money out of law enforcement by them generating their own money? The the, the seizures, the the way that they can uh, um, the red light tickets. I mean, well, but that's going to seem impossible, Derek, because as I pointed out, you've got to get the money from somewhere. And if it doesn't come from this, and I'm not saying that it's a good idea for all these red light cameras, anything else, I'm just pointing it out, it would seem like you've got to get it from the taxpayer. It's got to come from somewhere. You can't print it. Well, absolutely. Well, you got to remember, at one point during the 70s, we, we didn't generate money this way. You know, in law enforcement, we were still able to have a decent um, police agencies and, and Metropolitan Police Department, Prince George's County State Police. Everyone had an opportunity to do law enforcement, and they did it with, I don't know if I would I consider it less, but all I know now is law enforcement is very expensive. I mean, just to get a police cruiser on the street, just one police car outfitted with everything is almost $90,000. You know, 40 for the car and the equipment that comes with it. To me, that those are astronomical prices. I think we just really need to step back and look at what's really needed and figure out how we can continue to have taxpayers generate the revenue. Well, let's get to that. Well, outside let, sources. let me get to that. Mark, about 90 seconds that I have here, though, we talk about taking the money aspect out of it, but there's much more than this. The emails we saw that came out of this, some of the racist, the blatantly racist things that came out of here, that's not just money. That's a culture of absolute racism that has to come. So, so Mark, how do you take, which one's more important, I guess? Don't you have to take that out of it first before you worry about the money? Well, the main problem I have with the money is not ne not necessarily that enforcement leads to some sort of revenue, but when you're incentivized to enforce just for the revenue or when you budget revenue in the future and then you've got to make up with it. In other words, you've got the money out there, you've spent it, now you've got to write the tickets, you've got to do whatever you have to do to get that money to fulfill the budget. But as far as the systemic racial problems, absolutely, and it comes back to uh, better qualified, better educated, better trained officers and a zero tolerance in many cases uh, when you have this sort of thing. Look. What we're seeing in this report is a systemic problem that probably goes back a long time. It's not going to be fixed overnight. But I would agree with what you said at the outset of the program. We shouldn't cast this as a wide net. There are a lot of good police agencies out there and a lot of good police officers out there. What we're seeing in this case, though, it looks like a, a, a place that, or a uh, department that really has some problems that have been embedded 
and those attitudes have permeated and individuals with those attitudes have been promoted. Derek, 20 seconds from you. What's the first step? First step is change. I think um, um, that but we have to look at specifically. I think a police agency should be made up of its environment. I think you got to have the proper amount of balance with black, white, Latino, Spanish. You know, whatever the the, the complexion of that neighborhood is, that should be what's reflective of a, a police agency. Make it fit the community. That exactly would be a good place. Derek, you have to leave us. Unfortunately, I want to thank you very much for joining us, my friend. We will talk again. Thank you. Thank you. And Mark Harrell is going to remain with us because when we come back right after the break, another perspective from the street, seeking change in the nation's capital and the real world of body cams on cops as well. That's when we continue the investigation right here on Midpoint.